Hey everyone, my name's Sam. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is part six of my video series of my time down in Costa Rica at Rhythmia Life Advancement Center. If you haven't gotten to check out the other videos, I definitely re recommend doing so. I talk about my kind of life leading up to before my time at Rhythmia, and then the last four videos have been the, the four ceremonies that I partook in drinking ayahuasca. So this video is gonna be a little bit different. I'm actually going to talk about the other ceremonies that I had in Rhythmia that did not involve drinking plant medicine and they were breath work. And breath work is a ceremony in itself. So actually before I even started drinking ayahuasca, the very first ceremony that I got to partake in, the first night I was there, was a breath work session. So it took place in the Maloka, the same place where we drank ayahuasca. And so you're kind of, you're not on a mattress this time, but you're given kind of this little seat back and then some pillows to rest on and, and a blanket and also a mouthpiece to, to help you breathe through. So this experience was really transformative as well. And in some ways, just as transformative and powerful as, as drinking ayahuasca. So the first night, it was my first time doing breath work. You know, I had kind of dabbled with it a little bit back at home, studying Wim Hof and, and breathing, but nothing in a formal official setting or anything like that. And so now here was my experience to to really get to, to experience this with a trained professional and in this ceremonial setting. So, you know, as you're breathing in oxygen, that's basically all breath work is. It's just this... And you do that for like an hour long. It, it's it's pretty intense. And and then, you know, you kind of start off breathing that way. And then you kind of go into a double breath where it's like. <sighs> so it's kind of in the belly, then in the chest, and then the release. And you just get in this rhythmic flow of, of, of this breath work. And just really healing a lot of energy moving through the body and, and that's kind of what I realized all this oxygen is coming in and you're super oxygenating your body and you're also processing and releasing a lot of things so the first night in ceremony I didn't necessarily get to the level that I was expecting and again expectations should be thrown out the window <laughs> but of course there's my first ceremony and you know, a lot of people, the, my friend next to me, James, he was crying through the whole through the whole ceremony and other people were releasing a lot of things. And here I am and I'm, I'm feeling things in my body. I actually felt this just heavy, heavy weight, like something was just pressing down on me. Something something was either stuck in me or it was just a lot of, of weight that was that was felt on my body. And so we kept going through the ceremony and I guess then I kind of, there's this thing where I, I don't know how else better to ex describe it. We kind of get like these T-Rex arms where you tense up and you're, you're almost stuck. And then they recommend that you do this thing called toning. It's almost like a tantrum as a child. It's, it's, it's very silly when you first start doing it, but you just kind of start um, pitter pattering your arms and your legs on the floor and just getting all that excess energy just out of your body and just moving it and, and so we did that and, and you actually kind of let out this like kind of this like scream almost in a way and just a just a really good way to to start getting energy flowing and and I kind of have talked in other videos about this concept of how all these things over over the years of of trauma and experiences and and pushing things down and suppressing how they get trapped in our body and stuck and so that's why breathwork is so beautiful because it's moving energy through the body and bringing these things to the surface and and processing them and then actually releasing them and letting them go and it's just another very powerful transformative healing modality so the the emotions that i got released in in this ceremony was really actually just laughter <laughs> so that was you know it was fun it was like okay because I don't know why, but the toning and the people screaming, I just, I couldn't help. I was just laughing. And, and we even got to this part where you're supposed to hold your breath in for as long as you can. And some people hold in their breath for like three to five minutes. And I, I didn't even realize, but I just kept laughing. Like it was just, so it's good. I mean, it's emotion. And, and that was my way of releasing in, in the ceremony. So 
So it was very good. And, and the, the helpers came around and they kind of put their hand on your stomach to make sure that you're breathing properly or they could put it on your shoulders. And sometimes they even touched your feet. I don't know exactly how they were, you know, just helping assist, move the energy or whatever they were doing. But it was just so nice to have them there and to have them in that experience. So, so that was kind of the first breathwork ceremony. And, and of course, that was before plant medicine. So now there was a, two breathwork ceremonies after I had gone through all the ayahuasca experiences. And once you're in the medicine and you're doing breathwork, it's like a whole nother experience. And the I think the most powerful breathwork experience I had was the first one I had after drinking ayahuasca. So technically the second second ceremony and this beautiful helper Courtney helped assist me through the whole thing and she knew she knew that I was just processing all these things and 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 when you're in the breathwork you're actually refeeling some of these old emotions that are trapped in your body you're reliving an experience and I guess I'll just kind of share this there was a few kind of things that came up but I'll just share the share this one story that um, I actually ended up deciding to share with the group after after breathwork and and this probably makes me sound pretty sensitive. I feel like I'm a sensitive guy and I ended up realizing I'm a total empath after after this whole week. But, you know, kids just take things to heart and and so there was this experience for me in, in my childhood when I was probably about five years old and it was we had this awesome tradition um, growing up, we had a cottage that we got to visit in the summer and we usually would go there for the 4th of July and we had this fun parade during the day. And after the parade, the kids got to partake in all these kind of yard games and, and that kind of thing. And so, so that's what I was doing. I was, my five-year-old self was, they actually, we had a race. It was like this 50 yard dash with kids in my age group. And we start, start this race and I get about maybe halfway through the race and I just start panicking. And I realize I have no idea where the finish line is. And of course, we're, we're running on this field and we're facing all of, all of the adults and our family and friends. And I just panic. And it was like, I must have my, been my first panic attack. I'm not really sure. And I just lost it. And I just, and I just finally, I located, I, it must have been my dad. And I just ran to him and was just bawling in tears. And I just felt so lost. And it was like, I couldn't, I couldn't even find the finish line for this 50 yard dash. And I was just I was shook. I was <laughs> just this sensitive, shook little kid. And it was like, I was just devastated. And and I think I just realized in some ways I, I carried that in my body. So I had to refill the, these emotions. And and maybe there were some stories that I created for, for myself that I guess I don't know fully what they are, but maybe I don't know how to get to the finish or that I... I don't, I'm not capable enough to, to make it like the other kids could. And, and then the real stories I think that I created about myself was they, afterwards, the guy who was kind of coordinating all the stuff came over and he handed me a ribbon and I was just like, I I don't deserve this. I, <laughs> I, I couldn't even make it halfway through the race and I've just been crying in an emotional wreck the last few minutes. Why, why do I get a ribbon, you know? And, and I don't know if I just created this story that it was like, I'm not worthy. I don't, des I'm not deserving. I just must have somehow created that story that I'm not enough. And, and so again, I had to feel through that during this breath work. And, and I was just so thankful that I got to share that with the group. And hopefully they saw it as, as transformative. And part of me was like, man, how, did I really create these stories off of something that was so minuscule compared to probably all these other, because I feel like so many people have this feeling of unworthiness or not being enough. And it's like, you would think that that comes from so, something much more traumatic. But for me, I was like, I don't know. I just, I was just really sensitive or, and of course you're not supposed to compare your traumas or, or things that happen to you to other people, but it's, it's hard to do when you can think of all the terrible things that, that kids or people have had to gone through where they create these stories. But I, I got to share that story and I just really wanted to relay the message that we are all deserving. We are all worthy. It's just these, we're born that way. It's just these experiences that, that come into life 
um, that happen to us where we forget that and we lose that sense of ourselves. But it's just not true. It's just false programming. It's just lies that we've told ourselves. And, 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 and thankfully, an experience like breathwork helps us go through that and process it. And so that's why I really recommend looking more into, into this wonderful healing practice. And, uh, and then, you know, I had some more things I, I'm not going to get into right now that, that came up and, and that was centered a lot of fear in my body. I guess I'll just say that I just was really scared. It was a, a moment in my past that I just was really scared. And that was really, really difficult to feel through. But again, this wonderful helper, Courtney came in and just helped me through the whole thing. And, and I don't, I don't know if I, if I really could have done it without her. And, and so you can see I'm getting emotional. This, this is as powerful as drinking ayahuasca. So, and you can do it at home. You don't have to go down to, to Costa Rica or, or Peru or, or the Amazon, you know, there, there's so many wonderful, beautiful healing modalities that you can do right here, right where you are. So, and then we did it for a third night and I don't, I don't know the third night of course, you know, the second night was the most healing and transformative. So I don't know, I, I don't really know how much I got out of the third night, but I think just further releasing and just further letting this oxygenation and energy move through the body. And we actually had a new group, the new group that was coming in um, for the next week and, and we were leaving. So it was kind of like this cool merging of of those of us that were starting to leave and new ones coming in. And so it was kind of like a, a different energy, but it was exciting that it was like, yeah, you know, I've been through this experience and now here I am wel welcoming you. And, and so it was just, it was just kind of more of a like fun last ceremony that, that I got to experience with, with everybody that I was saying goodbye to and everybody that I was, that I was just meeting. So I think I'm going to, going to leave this one here keep it a little bit shorter and thank you so much for tuning in as i do mention in all of my videos if you watch this and you decide that you want to book your stay at rhythmia if you would mention my name it's sam kern i would so 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 greatly appreciate it they have this wonderful program at rhythmia where if three people book and they mention your name i would actually be gifted a free stay down there so if that's something you're feeling called to do, if you're aligned with doing that, I would so, so appreciate it. Again, my name is Sam Kern, and I'm going to leave it here. There's one video left in the series, so we'll see you for that. Bye.